I'll let you start. You let me start? Yeah. Do you want okay. to start? It's your show. Oh, okay, I'll start then. Hello. <laughs> oh, no, it's your episode. You start it. All right, that's in the... All right. What do you want? So I'm going to be like, all right, guess I'm starting then. Yeah, you start um, it. Hi, I'm Ada Rose Cannon from Samsung Internet. Oh, you've done full conference mode. You've yeah. just you've walked on stage. And it's like, hello everyone. It's... Welcome to HTTP 203 with my guest Jake Archibald. Hello. <laughs> We're going to talk to you today about the web browser Samsung Internet. Never heard of it. What is it? What does it do? So Samsung Internet is a mobile web browser you can download from the Google Play Store. <laughs> it sounds like the, an advert at the start. I People know. are going to be like, where's the skip button? <laughs> this is the. <laughs> this this includes. Um, sponsored promotion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just here to talk about the browser which I work for. Yeah. Um, because Samsung Internet, it's a huge browser. Like, we have really a lot of users. Um, and not a lot of developers have actually ever heard of us, which is um, a bit of a pain and also a bit of a shame on me, considering I'm doing dev advocacy for them for like five years Oh, now. you can't take the whole that whole thing on your shoulders. <laughs> Go on. I mean, hopefully this will help as well. So I'm hoping this will help. Um, so hopefully by the end of this, like we'll have developers being like, wow, Samsung Internet, I should load it up on my testing devices in order to test our websites to make sure they work well. So do you get, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Do you get many things that don't work on it? Like what's, what kind of things would, if, if someone was going to install this on their testing device, what yeah. should they be looking out for that might might not work. Um, viewport issues, like um, um, like the viewport might be slightly different to Chrome. Um, obviously, like the sizes of our stuff is going to be slightly different. Um, also, users can turn on stuff like a tab bar or a bookmark bar, mm. which like are really handy for browsing because a lot of Samsung devices have really tall screens. So we make the most of that by giving you more options to put into that vertical space. Oh, cool. So that kind of stuff. Um, also, some of the APIs we do um, like implement ourselves, or they will require hooking up behind the scenes. So some of the more like device-specific APIs that might hook into particular hardware functions, they might not be hooked up as expected. And if it behaves ex very differently from Chrome or is in an unexpected way, um, like we do need to hear about that because um, um, that could definitely be an issue. So um, we should say like this is a it's a Chromium browser, right? Yeah, it's, like, it's a so Chromium it's... browser. Um, and I want to say like it's a it's a fork of Chromium. Like it's a version of Chromium maintained by Samsung. Mm -hmm. We pull in upstream changes. Um, we're not just a wrapper around the Chromium custom tab. Um, so that's like that's the big difference. Like yeah, it's it's running a different. Like if you have Chrome and Samsung Internet on your the Android phone, yes. they they could be running different versions of the Chromium engine. And yes. obviously, the, the Samsung version is going to have mm. extra things. And yeah. yeah. And there's like all the kind of features which aren't part of the core Chromium engine that kind of like hook into it, where, where if you're building your own Chromium browser, you have to implement them yourselves. Um, so yeah. But what's one misconception with Samsung Internet is that like it only runs on Samsung devices. I did assume that at first. Yeah, everyone is like yeah. it's in the name, right? Like Samsung Internet. Yeah. And actually, until I think like version seven or eight, that was actually the case. Oh, so that's probably why I thought that. Yeah. <laughs> I remember um, it coming out, and I remember couldn't I couldn't install it. Like for um, yeah, for the longest time, it was a Samsung only browser. Um, like it started off as just being like an kind of an OEM browser, like a wrapped thing. And then around like five or six years ago, Samsung like went all in on, we want to have a web browser that is ours and um, where we can do web things in it, um, which we can't do if we are just relying on someone else's code base all the time. Mm. And so they forked Chromium and have like maintained it um, for a, quite a long while now to um, have Samsung internet. but. Even then, it was still only on Samsung devices because it was kind of viewed as a like this is a such a good thing we don't want to give it to our competitors. Hmm. Um, and us, a developer advocacy team, had to have a long fight to say like, hey, it would be super if it could run on other devices. 
so that developers who don't own Samsung devices can test in Samsung Internet. It seems easier for you as a developer advocate to persuade people to install a browser rather than buy go a out whole and buy phone. a phone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so, yeah, they worked hard and made sure that it, it does run well on, um, on any Android device. There are some features that rely on Samsung hardware to, to work well. The main one that jumps to mind is Web APK. Um, mm. Because if you're a Chromium browser, you can't sign APKs on Android because you're not Google. So APK is like, the, the this is when you're installing a website to your home screen, yes. right? Because it has to wrap it as an Android app, which is a, an APK. Yes. So most other Chromium browsers on Android, when they install an app, it will just be like a bookmark that, that like, well, bookmark that opens up in, in full screen or mm -hmm. um, standalone. But it won't have a separate APK file. And it won't be able to do have any of the benefits that come with that. But on Samsung, because we have the Samsung store on Samsung devices, we can generate APKs. So if you're running Samsung Internet on Samsung devices and you install a website to your home screen, it will generate an APK and install it. Whereas if you do the same thing on a Google device or, or any other um, manufacturer of Android phone that isn't Samsung, it will. Um, um, just generate you your standard bookmarklet bookmark thing. Yeah. Because it doesn't have the certificates to, to do that. Right. OK. Yeah. So there's like a few small differences. Um, and like we also have extensions and ad blockers. So um, this is it because like Chrome on Android doesn't have extensions. So this is, this is a feature that is unique to, well, maybe not unique to Samsung Internet, but yeah. certainly different from Chrome. Mm. And the extensions come through the Samsung Store. Mm -hmm. um, so the screenshot on the right is the Samsung Store. So I don't think extensions work um, on ah, non-Samsung devices. Yeah, OK. Um, but I think the a lot of the content blockers are delivered through the Play Store, um, so can be installed. But if you're on a Samsung device, we can like hook into the Samsung Store direct, the Galaxy Store directly, and install it. So if I was to click on the download button, say next to next to Unicorn Ad Blocker. It would just install it there and then and turn it on for me. Whereas you'd have to go through the Play Store if you're on a, a different exactly, brand of yeah. Android device. Right, OK, yeah. You can't show me adverts. I'm behind five ad blockers. Um, <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> it's, I know. Do you it's, seriously run that many? Like, why not, right? Like, there's, <laughs> there's very little overhead. I suppose. And I get to run one. And uh, I, 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 I don't get any adverts. It's great. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Um, I like that. It's behind an army, that. That is yeah, great. Yeah. yeah. Also, Leah, like, I use them for testing and stuff as well. So yeah, that's actually kind of fun. Every now and then, like I, so I have two versions of internet installed on my phone. I have internet and internet beta. Internet beta I use as my daily driver. It's usually about six weeks ahead of the, of the stable one. Similar to how in Chrome, we've got Canary yeah. and the, the normal one, right? The, 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 independent engines. Exactly, yeah. Completely different apps, I suppose. Yeah, right? totally yeah. different apps. Every now and then, I will open up internet, which has no ad blockers turned on, and be like, what is this? <laughs> this isn't the internet I remember. Back to the beta. Uh, yeah, because I run, I keep the internet one for, for testing the default installation and the beta for actually using as my day-to-day -day driver. That is, uh, I, I, I do the same with Chrome and, and Canary. I use yeah. Canary as my, you know, um, I feel it's my responsibility to when I go like look at the web in the morning and everything's broken. It's like, right, I have to file the bugs hopefully <laughs> before they get to beta and, and stable, that sort of thing. Yeah, but it's the exact same with me. Like whenever I go to a site and it's broken in Samsung Internet beta, I'm just like, okay, is this also broken in stable Samsung Internet? And if it is, I file a bug. Um, which by the way, if anyone else wants to do that same thing, please do. Um, if you come across a bug, email it to browser at Samsung.com. So and I guess they would only do that if it was a would they only do that if it was a bug in Samsung only? Like, would, would it be? Or, or yeah. So, so essentially, if you find a bug in Samsung Internet, load it up in in Chrome Stable, see if it's a bug there, and if it's a bug there, then we are matching Chrome's behavior, which, in our opinion, is like the works as intended. Works as intended. We're doing what developers expect. If it does work in Chrome, it means that either we've messed something up 
and um, we need to fix it, which is probably the case, or the website owner themselves haven't tested it in Samsung Internet, and and there's a slightly different viewport or like some small difference between, and they've built a very fragile website, which I hopefully isn't the case. Um, so I guess Samsung Internet, if you're forking Chrome, the yeah. release schedule could be out of step, right? It so, is, yes. So that, so that could be another reason that you could see a difference between the two browsers. So I guess it would be worth, like if you really wanted to do the maximum, you would be testing in sort of equal engine numbers. Yes, but... ideally you'd be looking at, and this is what I do. Like if I am, if someone says there's a bug in Samsung Internet, I will download an old version of Chrome and and compare them because yeah, like in an ideal world, our releases would be in lockstep with Chrome, um, but um, that would essentially require like infinite engineers to implement all of the changes as Chrome puts them, um, whilst at the same time ensuring that all of our own particular browser features also work, and it's just a nightmare. So we usually go up in, in jumps of like um, two to four Chrome releases um, um, each. Is that major, version. not major version? Is that major version releases? Or yeah, major version. Ma OK, so in major, OK, so it would be so, like Chrome 100, and then it would be Chrome 104 or something, something like, like that. that yeah. OK. And we only do the updates in the major version of Samsung. Like you can tell there's been an engine upgrade because we've updated the major version number. So Samsung Internet 16 and Samsung Internet 15 have different um, um, engines, but 16 and 16.0 and 16.2 have the same engines, but there might be some more uh, features turned on, like UI stuff around it and like, hooks into the into yeah. the engine, right? Or, okay. Or like, well, more like UE features, um, or like we might have a we might have improved our smart anti tracking, or um, or sometimes we've like. Actually, yeah, we have done that. We've turned on web Bluetooth. Oh, interesting. Okay, in, so in, it, in a minor version number, even though we haven't changed the engine, we've we've turned it on by the default. The flags have changed. So. Yeah. yeah, but it's still a significant, therefore, like change in how websites might work if they're yes. changing for that feature. Okay. Uh, I have a slide here that's like a page where you can see like our open source like Chromium build, like how we commit changes and stuff like that. I used to say we're the second biggest contributor to Chrome after Google. Unfortunately, Microsoft has more engineers than us, and, oh, it, oh, and okay. they've kind of stolen the silver medal from us. <laughs> um, but we are still a major contributor into Chromium. We upstream like bug fixes and stuff like that. And so, I, so uh, earlier on, I was like, I was being a little bit snarky, and because we were talking about like uh, you know, the amount of contribution that like, yeah. uh, Samsung makes to Chromium, and also like how how much of a how much usage the browser gets. Yeah. And I was like, jokingly said, um, so why don't you make a desktop browser? Because it's Chromium, it runs on <laughs> desktop. Why don't you just yeah. go ahead and do that? And then you showed me something interesting. Yeah, so we have a desktop browser. So the same APK which runs the mobile browser has a desktop version that runs in Samsung DeX. So yeah, so, so this you've been running your slides off your phone. Yeah, so this is my running off my telephone here. And if I minimize this, you can see it's just like it's just like a an operate like a desktop operating system that runs off Samsung devices. It's called Samsung Dex. I think it's cool as heck. I don't Samsung need to advertise this because no one knows about this. But yeah, if you have a Samsung device, plug it into a HDMI. And this is because I like, uh, well, I, I've tried to use the web version of Slides on my phone, and I know because you know with a mobile user agent. You, you you just get a redirect to the app. Which yeah. As a fan of the web, I hate. But this, I mean, this is running on your phone. But because you're in this this Dex mode, like it's sending the full user agent, and you're yeah. running the full version of of Google Slides in Samsung Internet, but on your phone. Yes, it's um it's fantastic for all kinds of things. Like it runs progressive web apps, incredibly. Like, so I'm like a I'm a developer. So um, one of the ways I work is that I open Termux. I have the um, there's a project called Code Server which lets you run a server version of Visual Studio Code. I run that in Termux. I open it in my browser, install it as a PWA, and now I have what is essentially, which I believe is where a lot of people run um, Visual Studio Code on Chromebooks as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it's it's fantastic because I have a full 
like web development environment in my pocket, which I can just go into the office and plug in and work. And I'll be honest, I don't do that much these days because every day I work from my home office. Why? Why is that? <laughs> what What happened in the world that resulted yeah. in that? I'm not gonna put this this video at a particular point in time <laughs> um, by saying what it was that causes me to work from home every day for the past two years. <laughs> um, but, but when like this was the like one of the best well actually smackdowns I've ever received. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> well actually, <laughs> like, okay, fine, yeah, all right, um, you win. A mobile browser is also a desktop browser, which I think is pretty cool. Oh yeah, some of the other things we do uh, that's a bit different to Chromium. All right, we have two modes for our dark theme settings. Mm -hmm. So you can choose to use the web the the dark theme built into the website, which is mm -hmm. defined by um, the CSS, right? Yeah, the, the CSS. The right? app media like prefers uh, color scheme. Prefers, yeah, yeah. Um, or if you turn that off and you have dark mode turned on. We will generate a dark theme for any website algorithmically, and it actually works really well. Really, it even changes like SVG files and stuff like that, and it's it's pretty good. Interesting. Um, like if you really, really, really want a dark theme and don't trust the website to deliver one, you can do that. Cool. One that's pretty nice is that you can change the system. You can use the system font for all web pages, so basically disable um, the website font loading. And what's kind of neat about that is that um, if you use a, a dyslexic font on your phone or use a particular font to help with dyslexia, uh, you can turn this on, have all websites use the same font. Um, I turn it on uh, just because I really like Samsung Sans. Um, <laughs> so that's it being overridden there on a Wikipedia page, I guess. Yes. Cool. Um, all right. And also, we have HTTPS everywhere kind of built in, uh, which you can turn on. So that, does that just then block anything HTTP? Is that, uh, uh, it, or is it tunnel? no? It, it's more if it if if there is a old HTTPS alternative, it will redirect you to it. Makes sense. Yeah. But the one on the left, what I want to show is that the text size slider, as well as like a standard zoom in, will push the text size on websites larger than is the default. So you can make at least the layout as it is, right? Like it's yeah, yeah. yeah it's not so like a pinch zoom. Yeah. It's not a pinch zoom. It just makes the text bigger. A bit like, and I guess, Command and Plus or, or, or Control Plus on a, on a desktop. Exactly, right? yeah. yeah. Um, so you can make it smaller if you want to. Uh, I'm, I'm, I have mine defaulting to like 125%, which now it made me realize I am like getting the age where I need that kind of. I, I was literally find myself squinting at just this screen, and I was like, oh, where are my glasses? They're over there. Never yeah. mind. That's OK. <laughs> so yeah, you can do um, like stuff like so. We have lots of stuff for like accessibility, um, as well as like the ad blocking and um, and content blocking stuff. We do we have like a smart anti tracking, which is like a machine learning based um, like tracker blocker. Okay, which is pretty handy. You can block third party cookies. You can. I guess that's something else yeah. that people would want to like test with as well is like to make sure that um, oh yeah please like, federated it. login systems still continue to work with with that sort of thing enabled yeah so that's a great thing to test with um, and so a lot of stuff would tend to be aimed a bit more at power users who really want to customize the browser just like decide what they want to do like we take the term user agent really seriously like we are the user's agent we're making the web work for them mm -hmm. like. There's content you don't want to see. You don't have to see it. Like, I think this is like what this shows is that in uh, although you know this is Chromium and yeah. so is Chrome, that there are significant differences here, and it's not just um, like we you know the situation on on iOS where browsers can only be a, it, it's the same engine underneath. It's the same one that's installed with the operating system. So like if you run Chrome on iOS, it is just the, the shell. That's not what's happening here. This is not yeah. just a shell. It's running an entirely different version of the engine. Yeah. It's got its own hooks in. It's enabling different APIs. Yeah. It, it kind of shows that you can have like diversity um, even with the same engine. Exactly, like, yeah. yeah. Like, like there's an entirely different ethos going into designing Samsung Internet versus the design thinking that goes into Chrome. Mm -hmm. And even though we're running the same engine, like the people who use our browser versus like standard Chrome will have Different will experience different versions of the web, 
because that's how the web is meant to be experienced. Like the web is, the web isn't the same for everyone. Like not, not everyone's going to experience the web in the same way, um, depending on the device they're using, the browser they're using, the preferences and extensions they turn on. And that's a fantastic thing. And the web is, the web is, like the web itself is designed to be flexible enough to account for these changes. Like, like I think, I think that's like th that was the, the web was born with that in mind. Yeah. Right? And we saw that like the early days of the web with things like um, user styles. Yeah. And, exactly. And that sort of died off. I felt like mm -hmm. when in the desktop era of the the web. But then, yeah, w when smartphones became a thing. You now had a situation where there were like lots of people experiencing the web in a very different way, and it wasn't just like the technical users that were installing extra like stuff. Mm. It is it is people just using like different browsers with features which are like you know interesting for users. It's not yeah. just like you, nerd customization. It's <laughs> it's like yeah, user features. Yeah, it's it's um, it's really I think it's really interesting about how the web because when you have if you're building an app. You would never build an app with the expectation that some of the elements in your app might randomly be deleted by the operating system. Yet it's a perfectly standard expectation in the web that, yeah, users may delete some of the elements on your web page because they don't like them and they've mm -hmm. got a thing to block them. Um, or they might be running it with the with the fonts like um, twice as big because they need that to be able to see them clearly. And I think it's, that's a great thing about the web. And I think that's it's really really a, like a power. Um, and I'd like, I'd really like to see like more Chromium engines like choosing to strongly differentiate themselves from the underlying experience. But yeah, one thing I wanted to mention was um, just like how, how big we are. Like Samsung internet is really is like the little giant. Very few developers have heard of us. Um, but like in some, in some regions, we have 25% of all mobile browsing. Um, Granted, that region is South Korea, um, <laughs> where Samsung's from. Still, it's a big place. It's a big place, but yeah. like even in in Europe, like Germany, we have twelve percent. Um, so, like some regions, we have significant um, like browser usage. Like it's probably bigger than Firefox, right? And yeah, or, yeah, yeah. We're basically the the third browser these days, hmm. um, like Chrome, Safari, us. Um, but yeah, we're not super well known, which is unfortunate. Um, like worldwide, we're at 7%, um, which may sound small, but when you remember it's 7% of all mobile browsing. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's a pr pretty big number. The numbers get yeah. big. Like we have over half a billion users. So I guess what's the, the takeaway for this then, I guess, is is to like, you know, there's this browser, it's used by a <laughs> massive number of people but maybe isn't getting the developer attention that it should. Like what I'd really like is for developers to be like, wow, all these features in Samsung internet sound amazing. I'm going to use it as my daily driver. Um, but people like the browsers they like. Like give it a go. But like if you even if you don't use it day to day, please install it on your like testing devices in your um, in your like device lab. Um, we work with Selenium um, and like like the the browser testing tools, hmm. um, like you can plug us in and open up the inspector in Chrome and inspect us like you would a, a Chrome browser. And if um, people find any bugs, they can tweet yeah. you tweet you on Twitter. Yeah, so <laughs> either tweet them at me directly. I'm at Ada Rose Cannon, or tweet them at Samsung Internet, which is at Samsung Internet. Um, or you can email, but. The best way is just to email them directly to the engineers, which is uh, browser at samsung.com. And it will pretty much go straight into their bug tr into their bug tracker. Yeah, go do that then. I, I will. I promise I will. <laughs> I might actually already have it installed. You do? But I haven't filed a bug before. Uh -huh. So I need to do more testing. Well, go and... find a bug and report it. I shall. Cool. Thank you so much for having me. And um, and thank you for coming to HTTP 203. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> You've got. You have to now find someone else to. Uh, oh, is that how this? Yeah, works? this is one in, one out. Like you find, you find someone else. And so, uh, good luck. You're cursed now. Good luck. <laughs> uh, bye. Well, I guess I'm stuck here now. I guess I'll see you uh, next week for HTTP two hundred three.